Hi, everybody. I'm very excited for our next guest. Dr. Jay Bhattacharya is a professor at Stanford University Medical School. Very fringe medical school. <laughs> One of these outliers. He's a, a physician, epidemiologist, health economist, and public health policy expert focusing on infectious diseases and vulnerable populations. He was also one of the co-authors of the Great Barrington Declaration, which described an alternative approach to COVID policies, policies called focused protection that sought to protect the most vulnerable while avoiding or minimizing the social harm of COVID-19 lockdowns, a pr an approach that most people agree was the correct one now. But let's bring on Dr. Jay Bhattacharya. After he was censored for having that opinion uh, and co-authoring the Great Barrington Declaration, which actually, uh, well, that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, how we should have been doing it, and because now everybody's backtracking. Uh, let me welcome to the show Dr. Jay Bhattacharya. Thank you for having me on, Jimmy. So grateful for you uh, having me on all the all all through the pandemic. Actually, I, one I'm, of the things that wasn't canceled. Oh, I'm grateful for for so much a wingnut outlier and fringe people like you could come on and provide me <laughs> with the kind of medical co confidence that uh, I need to do these stories. Okay, we're back. And the reason why I wanted to have you on today is because people are starting to backtrack. People who were pro lockdowns, people who were pro masks, people who were pro school closures, people who were pro mandates, they're now all running as far and as fast away from those policies as they can, although no one has issued any apologies to you haven't gotten an apology, have you, doctor? <laughs> Not any official ones. I mean, you know, what I really want is that these policies never come back. We have to cement that in place. They're just these crazy anti, you know, these authoritarian things that didn't do any good for, for the for the poor, for children, for working class people. It was just a crazy set of policies, and the public health did it uh, to us. Uh, that that would be the best form of apology. You know, when you say public health, what do you mean by public health did it to us? What is public health? So uh, I, I'm thinking mostly about the official arms of public health. I mean the 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 pandemic plan uh, that we had before are, are things that people inside public health and the CDC, the World Health Organization, have discussed for years. And the pandemic plan was something like the Great Barrington Declaration. That was the old plan. That's how we dealt with the pandemic for a century. The, the World Health Organization, at the beginning of this pandemic, looked at China and said, oh, look, they locked down, stopped the disease. And they told the world to do the same thing. Tony Fauci is a perfect example of what I mean. They scared the living daylights out of people. And they told, and they use bad science to do it. And uh, it's it's one thing if it's a political actor. I mean, politics. I you know, I, whatever people say crazy things all the time. But like, public health has an obligation to the people to to tell the truth, to look, to think about vulnerable people, to think about children, to think about poor people in what they do and say, and to, and to always be clear about what the science truly says. They didn't do that. And that has tremendous effects on what everyone else does. I don't. I don't blame the public for going along with these policies. They were following the lead of public health. Yes. Well, well the interesting thing is that you, what you just said is they're all trying to now pretend that the science changed, even though before COVID, everyone had agreed on the science that the way you do it is you target the vulnerable and you protect them and that masks don't stop an airborne virus, like especially one like a coronavirus. Uh, everybody agreed on these things before. Uh, but then when COVID happened and uh, Dr. Fauci then used fear. So I know, I've learned this through talking with Dr. Drew. Dr. Drew works side by side with Dr. Fauci during the AIDS crisis. And he said that Dr. Fauci always preached fear, fear, fear. You have to scare people into doing the right thing. To me, that's why he did a lot of the things he did, including flip-flopping on masks. Because, because at first they were all for masks. He was all against masks. Don't wear a mask. He said it twice be, uh, during COVID, and I'll show you, but now they're being confronted because now the studies have come out, the randomized controls trials that showed that the masks didn't make a difference and that was always ridiculous. But we always knew this, right? There was never any data that said masks would help. And now they're being confronted about it. So here uh, is what Fauci said in a New York Times interview. He said, from a broad public health standpoint, at the population level, masks work at the margins, maybe 10 percent. But for an individual who religiously wears a mask, a well-fitted K95 or N95, it's not at the margin. It really does work. So, again, he's still talking in a way that confuses you to think it works. They don't. The, the, what he 
advocated doesn't work. In fact, when he advocated cloth masks, those never, ever did anything, even if you wear them correctly. And so he's trying to use a lot of words that ends up with, hey, they really do work. And that's that. And so he's trying to mislead you again. And he's lying because there was never any data that showed we had that masks would make a difference in this situation. There was never any data. And guess what? There still isn't. And I mean, so they were the mannequins, you know, it's, uh, if, you, if you're a mannequin, Jimmy, it, it, it'll protect you against getting COVID. I think. If, <laughs> <laughs> well, he, and so now uh, uh, Aaron Burnett uh, confronts the current Surgeon General about this. She reads this quote to him and then she says this as work. Do you see how some find this an extremely significant statement? Because for most of us, we were told it didn't matter what kind of mask. Mm -hmm. Any mask was good. Our kids had to wear masks for an extra year and a half in school, and none of them wore them the right way. That that hearing that may be good that he's saying it, but that hearing that is upsetting to a lot of people? Well, I can certainly understand that for many people who were listening closely to the messages that were coming through and guidance as to what to do, when they recognize that sometimes guidance shifted and evolved over time, that could be disconcerting. And sometimes the guidance does evolve over time as you learn more. And I certainly remember, even though I was, I was a private citizen the first year of the pandemic, but I was watching closely and we were learning a lot as a country uh, about the pandemic and, you know, guidance shifted accordingly. But look, one thing I think that we all have to recognize is this pandemic has been incredibly. Guidance did not shift because of science or data, especially when it came to masks. And her question is correct. And he is lying. And I can show you that well, uh, that he's lying because here's what Dr. Fauci and every doctor used to say before Corona. And the best way for me to prevent getting an infectious disease and having to have you as my doctor is what? Um, wearing a mask. No, um, no, no. I don't need to do that. <laughs> you, um, if somebody's, I can see they're getting ready to sneeze or cough, you, walk away. You avoid all the paranoid aspects and okay. do something positive. A, good diet. B, you don't what? smoke, I know. I know you don't drink, at least not very much, so that's pretty good. Get some exercise. I know that you don't get as much exercise as yes. you should. This is that's Joe correct. Rogan. What is that? He sounds like Joe Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what they said before coronavirus. Then when coronavirus did hit, this is what he said again. Right now in the United States, people should not be walking around with masks. You're sure of it because people are listening really no, closely to this. Right now, people should not be walking. There's no reason to be walking around with a mask. When you're in the middle of an outbreak, Wearing a mask might make people feel a little bit better, and it might even block a, a droplet, but it's not providing the perfect protection that people think that it is. And often, there are unintended consequences. People keep fiddling with the mask, and they keep touching their face. And when you touch your face, you have the virus on your fingers, so you're probably more likely to infect yourself because you're wearing that stupid mask. So... um let me bring in Dr. Jay Bhattacharya. It, so he was telling the truth then. And then Dr. Fauci then decided to scare the hell, this is my theory, to scare the hell out of the country and say he even admitted that he lied. Yeah, we lied before and we told people not to wear masks because we were afraid they would all go buy the masks and we wouldn't have masks in hospitals for our hospital workers. That was the lie he told then. The truth was this, that they never had data that masks worked. They still don't have data that they do and that they just decided to lie to make everybody in a state of fear so they would accept mandates and lockdowns. That's my theory. What do you say? A real doctor. I mean, first of all, you were absolutely right. He was telling the truth in that clip and he was telling the truth in both of those clips. There was never any good evidence that masks worked to slow to stop the spread of a highly infectious respiratory virus. Uh, you know, good randomized evidence before the pandemic found no, like it was impossible to find an effect. So why did he do this? Like, why did he switch? Um, before I get to that, I just want to say one, one other thing about the consequences of that. First of all, look how, look how, if he's lying there, he, he, he said he was lying in that second clip, right? Yeah. And, and, and so I have one more clip where he admits that he was lying. Where he says the reason why we did that was because we were afraid people were going to go out and buy masks and we had to protect the, the healthcare workers that were on the front lines who were in harm's way. So he basically admits that they lied. And I've showed, mean, I don't have that in here now, but I've showed that clip to our audience a million times so they know he's admitted that. Yeah, but the thing is, like, could you tell that he's lying? I mean, he's must no. be the best doctor. I mean, 
It's the, I said that uh, before when we showed those clips. Yeah. I'm like, look at Gusto. If he's lying there, yeah. then that that guy should get an Academy Award because that is a perfect lie. And I couldn't tell. Well, the reason is he's not lying. He <laughs> lied when he said he was lying there. That's the irony. That's the layers of lying of, of Fauci. And, and then and then what, what consequence did it have? A, a whole bunch of, I mean, this virus really was deadly for old people. He told people, in effect, go wear a mask even if you're old, go wear a mask. Go expose yourself in public because you're you're protected. After you know that's in that second lie, a lot of people are probably got COVID that shouldn't should have been protected from COVID, thinking they're protected because of that lie. Wearing a mask would protect them. I I think that lie was consequential in terms of actually exposing people to COVID that should never have been exposed, like especially older people. And as far as like mass and fear, it definitely amplified the fear told everybody oh this is a serious pandemic you better take it seriously i mean that was that there's no question in my mind that that was a part of the motivation it was also i mean there's a there's a, a layer to it because you know if you if you um tell people they're really really scared you should be really really scared and now you give them some talisman you can do something you have something some visible thing you can do it reassures you at the same time it it, it, it reinforces the fear uh, it kept the pandemic going yes Yes, it kept the pandemic going. And I know people who consider themselves staunch lefties who have blocked me on Twitter for just tweeting at them the facts about masks. And they, they call you a, a genocider. They call me all kinds. They called you a genocide. They could, yes. They, uh, and a, a eugenicist. That's it. Oh, dear God. Yeah. So I, don't, I had to look that up, and then I qu quickly forgot what it meant. But it's got something to do with me wanting people to die. Do, do you think that the thing... Cause I know they all admired how China was handling it. <laughs> yes. You know, and when I, I told you when I went to China, you know, bird flu and all that had happened back. So when I went in 2016, there's just some people that always just wear masks there. Yeah. Okay. Like it's just the regular thing. And I remember being a whole time, I was like, but this really looks like the future is all high tech. Mm -hmm. Some people just had masks before the mask thing, even. And is that him looking at, you? well, China controls them very well with the masks. And maybe he could I'm use sure masks. that's what, there's no doubt in my mind Fauci advocated masks because he knew it would scare the hell out of people and it would make people go along with mandates and lockdowns and anything else that they wanted to do. And uh, the lockdowns were, again, he, he, now he's pretending he didn't advocate for lockdowns. Well, we have video of him saying he did advocate for lockdowns. He, so they, he's lied every which way about this. And if there's anybody who should be in prison right now, it's Dr. Fauci. Um, because they're, it, even, even this guy, right, who gets a lot of stuff wrong, gets a lot of stuff right. This guy says, many may not know that science never changed. Fauci told the truth the first time on 60 Minutes. He lied the second time about cloth masks because Trump didn't do it. Academics had to and couldn't read the literature. It always was negative as this Cochrane study. That's the biggest randomized control study. It's a, uh, we totally covered that here. He says again, he goes, let me be clear. The science did not change. Public health experts just started lying. Fauci, and here's the thing I want to ask you. So Fauci controlled the NIAID budget. He could have run 10 random controlled trials, studies of masking, different masks, different ages, different settings. He chose to run zero. Instead, he went on TV a thousand times and lied about effectiveness of cloth masks. The first time on 60 Minutes, he told the truth. The rest were actually lies. So why didn't you, why do you think he didn't run any randomized control trials? I know why, but I go ahead. You tell people why you think he didn't. There were almost a dozen randomized studies before the pandemic. There was one, uh, Jimmy, where they uh, for the flu to check to see if it stops the flu. They 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 randomized people on the Muslim Hajj. You know, w one tent has the mask randomized. One other tent had no masks. Um, not not everybody complied, but like the, there was no difference in the flu spreading in the in the mass tent and the un and the non mass tent. We knew before the pandemic that there was no good evidence that population masking works. If he was to run another randomized trial, he would have found the same thing. Now, you know, eventually there were randomized trials, like in Bangladesh. Uh, there was one. There's one in like Denmark and one in uh, Burkina Faso. All all three found he's almost no either zero or almost no no effective masking. Or it, I should be clear, failed to detect an effective masking. If he'd run ten randomized trials, he would have found the same answer we've always found with population masking randomized trials. It doesn't work because people don't like wearing them. It's not possible. And you know, you wear them and they have like whole like if you know if you you have glasses, Jimmy. I'm sure you ever if you wore them, your glasses fog up. Mm -hmm. That's virus spreading up. That's how because the it just so like I just don't understand. Um, 
it, it, the, I mean, I think Vinay is right. He, they were just lying there. They were just absolutely lying just and t- talking about the evidence in a ways that, that they have a professional responsibility not to talk about. And could I, just, I just want I always like to make the point that let's let's say that a mask somehow slowed the spread of coronavirus or any virus. Let's say let's say somehow it did. It would slow. All you're doing is temporarily maybe delaying the inevitable because in June of 2021, the, the COVID czar appointed by Joe Biden, Andy Slavitt, said everybody's going to get COVID. That's how infectious it. That's back when it was Delta. That's before it was even coronavirus. I mean, before it was even, uh, what is it called now? Omicron, yeah. which is way more contagious than Delta. But even when it was Delta, the head of the, 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 the czar for coronavirus from Joe Biden said everybody's going to get it. So why did they still keep pushing masks? If everybody's going to get it, the best you're doing, even in that situation, the best you're doing is delaying the inevitable, aren't you? Yeah, that's exactly right. Actually, can I, can I go back to one thing you said earlier, which sure. is really interesting about the politics of this? In the U.S., it became this like left-right divide. Yes. Like if you walk around, you see, okay, if you're wearing a mask, well, they're probably a Democrat. It's crazy that something like this would ever become a political. You know, in Sweden, the the, the, the Swedish socialist uh, social democratic government didn't recommend masks because they were following an honest public health agency. And so kids went to school normal in spring of 2020 without masks in Sweden uh, uh, under age 16. None, just regular school. Uh, it's it, it, This is the kind of thing where... And what if, were the outcomes uh, of that? No kids died in spring of 2020. And the, and the teachers had lower rates of COVID than the other average of other workers in the population. The, it's, it's so it's just it's one of these things where like the science is very clear. If, as soon as public health becomes politicized in this way, you know something's gone deeply wrong, and you can blame it on the right. Fine, I mean, yeah, Trump, it, it, you, who I you know, it's just he he would be tr- terrible mistakes, politicized everything. But you also blame it on the left. It should, it, actually, you don't have to blame it on either. Actually, I fundamentally blame it on American public health. They lied, they politicized things, and as a result, divided the population in ways that it's irresponsible for someone in public health to do. You know how they didn't do the tests on the effectiveness of masking? I'll bet you what studies they did do is the effectiveness of linking it to your political party <laughs> and using that <laughs> to your advantage. I bet they got all kinds of, I bet they have stacks that data. of studies on yeah, that. Yeah, they got data how to divide people and make people. So so that so that so that's, at least CNN is pushing back against it. But they're always going to say the science changed. The science didn't change. There was never any science that said masking would stop an airborne virus. Never, never. There was Fauci a, is science, Jimmy. So he is, but is. <laughs> and so now, here's one more part of here's some uh, uh, crazy science that's not real. They were saying when the vaccine rolled out that it stopped transmission, it stopped contraction. Uh, you didn't spread, and and if you got it sick and you were vaccinated, you didn't spread it. But you still got to wear a mask. <laughs> but you still had to wear a mask. <laughs> so, but and 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 that's what um the CDC director Walensky told Congress back in April of 2021 that the that the virus stops it. I mean, the vaccine stops it, and that the people who are infected, if you're vaccinated, you don't pass it on. And so she was confronted about that recently in uh, Congress, and she lies to Congress again. Director Walensky, in March 2021 on MSNBC, you stated that, quote, vaccinated people do not carry the virus. They don't get sick. Do you remember making that statement? Yeah, under the I do. Well, I remember such statements. I don't know if I remember that one. Okay, was that statement correct? At the time, it was. It was a wild type. Okay, so she it wasn't correct at the time and she knew it wasn't correct at the time. But and I'll show you how we know in a second. But here we go. A virus that we had. It was um, even before the alpha variant. It was the initial wild type virus. And all the data at the time suggested that um, people who were vaccinated, um, even if they got sick, couldn't transmit the virus to someone else. All right. Is that statement still correct? Um, well, so we've had an evolution of science mm-hmm. and an evolution of the virus. We have since that wild type virus had the alpha variant, the delta variant, now the Omicron variant and numerous subvariants since that statement is no longer correct with the Omicron subvariants we have right now. Okay. She's lying again. How would that be an evolution of science? It's the same it's, it's, t- technique the whole time. It, yeah, that's right. It's not the an evolution. The virus could evolve. 
And that's exactly right. But here's how we know she's lying. The virus did evolve. So is this Kelly K. Carter? She says, look like Walensky lied to Congress yet again. Her statements on Maddow's show from March 29th, 2021, that vaccinated people do not carry the virus, were walked back just three days later by the CDC spokesperson who stated the evidence isn't clear. And then she shows you the article from CNN where this happened. So let me bring in Dr. Jay Bhattacharya. So why did she get away? With, first of all, she was lying, correct? And correct me if I'm wrong. Yep. And that, that's not a mistake. She lied twice now, and at least. And what do you say to it? Okay, so uh, let's let's try to be as charitable as we possibly can. In March of 2021, she had no evidence at all indicating that the, vac- the, the vaccine stopped you from getting COVID or transmitting it. The randomized trials in December of 2020 were not tested for transmission blocking and were not tested for, uh, for, for prevention of infection, just symptomatic infection, which is a different thing than all infection. So, in, and in March of 2021, no new evidence had been developed to allow her to say confidently on TV that if you get the vaccine, you will, it stops you from getting infected and it stops you from, from transmitting the virus. That was, that was a lie in, on CNN. Because, or at the very least, it was an overstatement of the vast overstatement of what the evidence said. The, in Congress, which I guess that clip was just relatively recent, that's a lie when she described what her state of mind in March of 2021. Th- that could not possibly be her state of mind because the evidence didn't say that in March of 2021. That's right. That's exactly right. There, there was no, again, just like with masks, nothing changed. There was nothing saying that at the beginning. In fact, and the reason why I know that she was lying when she said that in March of 2021 on Rachel Maddow was because a Pfizer executive admitted to a politician in the European Union at a hearing that that they never even tested it to see if it stopped transmission. So she didn't have they don't have that data. She didn't have the data, just like you said. She was making that up. And now she's saying, yeah, it was true then, but it's not true now because of uh, the virus mutating. Those are she's lying in three different ways right there. Yeah, and she's a worse actor than than um, uh, than Fauci. Fauci. Yeah, Fauci's yeah. a great actor. Yeah, yeah. Let me see what else we got here for you. Okay, so now she's resigned. Walensky is resigned. I want to do another mm-hmm. segment and show you all the lies. She's lied so much just through just through COVID. I mean, just about COVID. I can't even if I, I'm sure if I looked into any other thing that she's been ahead of uh, at the CDC besides COVID, she's lied about that. I'm sure up and down, left and right, like they all do, because we have co- corporate capture, regulatory capture of our agencies. And that's exactly what it's like. She's a she's a PR person for Pfizer and Moderna and Johnson and Johnson. Instead of looking out for the people, that's what Fauci is. That's what the head of the FDA is, who goes right from the FDA right to the board on Pfizer and vice versa. And that's what uh, Walensky is so i wonder where her job's going to be and how much money she's going to get she she just resigned on friday uh she did it on a friday right because she's a politician if you're going to resign anyway so anything else you'd like to say about walensky there i mean she has gotten so much science wrong it's almost uh, it's and it's and it's really it's been again consequential Uh, the main probably the worst thing that she's done jimmy is that she she worked to make sure schools stayed closed in 2021 and a, a generation of of young people, of kids, especially minority kids and poor kids, were denied a real in-person education because she did not live up to her responsibilities as director of the CDC to tell the American public that schools, it was a vital public health interest that schools open for in-person instruction for every child in America. And as a result, a lot of kids are going to face a, a, a lifetime of, of worse health, worse, uh, lower income lower life expectancies. That is the legacy this, the, of her tenure as CDC director. Jimmy, I'm starting to suspect she never even looked at any of those studies. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say that, uh, of course, that the vaccines are safe and effective, Kurt. Yeah. You know that, and they will keep you from getting seriously ill or hospitalized. And that uh, whatever we said here, uh, the, the FDA is right. And they give you the most important thing of all, knowing you're better than other people. Yeah, that's right. Watch my new comedy special, COVID Lies Are Funny, for only $10. Become a member at jimmydoor.com. Hey, and we're going to be on tour in Northampton, Massachusetts, Syracuse, Coho's, New York, Hartford, L.A., Bakersfield, Baltimore, Rosemont, Chicago, and a lot more. Oh, and San Francisco being added very soon. Go to jimmydoor.com for a link for tickets. See you there. Oh. 